Hello everyone and welcome to Bison Catholic Night. done with the bike race. There's so much that's been happening this spring, but we're done with it. And if you're like me, you pedaled 25 miles and your calf still hurt and pretty much your entire body still hurts because yeah, I'm sore. Okay. But, but we did it. We beat UND. Thank you so much for pedaling. Thanks for your fundraising and continuing to support the Newman Center. We did it everyone. And now that plastic trophy gets to stay another year in Father Cheney's office. So thank you. Um, there's not really a bunch of announcements happening here at the Newman Center, but um, a few things that I just wanted to, to put on your radar. Number one is that SAB applications are still open. We're, we're currently accepting uh, some of those applications to be a leader next year, being a leader next year. And uh, yeah, we, we just love to have you involved. So go ahead and feel free to submit that application. We also want to let you know that we're still going to be here for you. Now I know that next week starts dead week and after that finals week and then graduation of some sorts for some of us. But uh, moving into the summer, the priests are still here for you. Um, all of us staff will still be praying for you and whatnot. So just know of our prayers for you and that we're here for you, whatever you need, okay? Now, we're, we're not going to go right into the talk, but I wanted to give you some base information of what we're talking about tonight. So there'll be a great talk right after my little spiel um, from Aaron Hinks on the life of a saint. Life of the saint to be determined, but I wanted to define some terms, okay? So what is a saint? Saint is someone that has uh, been, well, I guess saint in a very general way is just someone that's in heaven. But we have canonized saints that the church tells us are people of, of courageous and, and significance in their lives that, that they've lived for Christ, okay? And that they've said, yes, without a doubt, this person is in heaven. Like St. Paul, of which we are named for in our Newman Center, um, we, we have that him as a patron so he can, he can intercede for us and bring prayers to Christ on behalf of us. And it's a really cool situation, okay? So getting into the whole idea of the spirituality of the saints and realizing that there's so many people that have gone before you that are in the bosom of Christ that we can ask for their help is just amazing. And I wanted to call some of the Newmanites and, and just say, you know, just like Buddy the Elf and, and calling where he says, Buddy the Elf, what's your favorite color? Then I can say, Al the Newman pal, what's your favorite saint and why? <laughs> so this is what we got for you. Uh, take a look. Hey, Hey Matt, it's Alan Newman Pal. Uh, who's your favorite saint and why? Saint Joseph, because of his awesome fatherly figure and his fatherly figure to uh, Jesus. Dope. One of my favorite saints is John Paul II. I really like John Paul II because I think that he lived his life always to the fullest and took advantage of every adventure that he could. And he showed us that every ordinary man can become a saint just like he did and that through his daily life and his, his hobbies that he was able to grow in holiness. So St. John Paul II, pray for us. The saint that I have loved getting to know over this past semester is St. Joseph. Um, he's just a great model for humility and for silence and allowing others to take the, um, the, the limelight. And his feast day is actually on Friday, so I've been praying to him a lot this week. And so, yeah, just a big fan of St. Joseph. Hey, Bofferding. It's Al the Newman Pal. Hi, Al. Who is your uh, favorite saint and why? One of my favorite saints is St. Catherine of Siena, whose feast day is today because she is a doctor of the church and I named after her. My middle name. Oh, not <laughs> I was like. <laughs> so my favorite saint is St. Augustine. He was a fifth century bishop and doctor of the church. And he, uh, though he lived in the fifth century, was contemporary to us. He was just like us in so many ways. He was concerned about success and climbing the ladder and uh, achieving, you know, acknowledgments and things like that. Uh, but he encountered Christ and he decided to leave that all behind, a very successful career, in order to become a, uh, a priest and then a bishop. And you've probably heard his quote that he says, uh, we were made for you, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. And so he is a great patron for us in the modern day. 
yeah, awesome saints. There's a lot of great people who have lived in the church. And if, if anything, it's just a testament to our ability to still live out a life with Christ and that, you know, if somebody else can do it, so can you. Um, I am, I'm super in love with the saints. Actually, some of my favorites are John Paul II, which I'm sure you heard. And and uh, right now I'm praying for the, the canonization of Archbishop Fulton Sheen. So help me in praying for him. But we're going to move on to see what Aaron has to say. Without any further ado, Aaron Hinks in his talk, The Life of a Saint. Yeah. So if you don't know me, uh, my name is Aaron, um, and I'm here to talk about a saint, uh, the life of a saint. And as um, this kind of came about, um, as coronavirus hit and we went online, um, I decided to kind of change who, who I was going to talk about um, to kind of give us a better, better opportunity to reflect on... Um, the, the teaching of a saint that would apply to, to this current moment. So I decided to choose Servant of God, Walter Ciszczek. Um So I'll kind of talk a little bit about him um, and then also talk a little bit about his teaching um, and yeah, his spiritual lessons that he can, he can impart on us during this time. Uh, so I, I first learned of Walter Ciszczek through uh, the book, He Leadeth Me. Um, and this book is pretty much just a book talking about um, his struggles and his life, uh, which I'll talk about later. And then it kind of goes through some spiritual lessons as well. And this is how I became acquainted with him. Um, so before um, we get started, so the servant of God um, pretty much means that he's just on his process towards canonization. Um, so the church has, has a process that they go through just to explain that a little bit. But he was uh, born in 1904 in Pennsylvania. And he was a Polish-American Jesuit priest who was sent to the Jesuit mission in Poland uh, in 1938. Um, so soon after he arrived, uh, World War II broke out and uh, Poland's kind of stuck in the middle between Germany and the Soviet Union. And he doesn't really know what, what's going to happen. And eventually his, uh, the Soviets invade about a year later and his parish mission closes. Um, and instead of uh, traveling west or going back home, he decides to travel east with the exiles into the Soviet Union and he heads to a Soviet logging town. Uh, there he was arrested in 1941 um, as a Vatican spy. Because he was a priest, um, the Soviets just assumed that he was a spy for the Vatican and he spent five years in solitary confinement um, before he was tried for espionage and sentenced to 15 years of hard labor. So throughout this imprisonment, um, he continued to pray the divine liturgy, um, give spiritual direction, offer retreats, um, perform his, his priestly ministry all covertly, um, which the Soviets um, pretty much disallowed. So, so he was doing this all, all undercover. And then after this 15-year sentence um, in, the, in the gulags, he then um, heads to the, the town of Norilsk, um, which is above the Arctic Circle. So really really cold um and yeah up there uh, he also has restrictions but he starts to establish um these parish missions again um and eventually he's returned to the u.s in a trade a spy trade in 1963 and then he died about 20 years later um and these 20 years uh he spent preaching um teaching giving retreats all on um divine providence and trusting in god's will and it's so this is this is kind of his story um so what can we what can we learn about it so it's not just that he went through um hard events that that he's a saint or holy man but it's it's the just the way that he he undertook the events the way that he reacted and uh just experienced god in these moments in the hardest moments um especially um when he might have felt alone or abandoned by god so the canonization process of father walter Ciszczek was opened um, first off due to an, a new spirit of trusting in God's providence, especially amid suffering, was the quote that, that they used. Um, and he never tired of preaching uh, divine, the divine providence and trusting in God's will. Um, and often asked the question how he survived all these years, these 25 years um, in the Soviet Union. His only answer was divine providence. From Ciszczek, we learn that saintliness isn't primarily about acting heroically in dramatic or devastating circumstances, but honor, honoring the ordinary everyday aspects of our life as treasured gifts from God. So I want to give you um, just a couple quotes 
just from his his book, He Leadeth Me, just so that you guys can reflect on them, think about them, especially in this time of the coronavirus. So the first one, um, it just says that each of us need not wonder what God's will for us is. His will for us is clearly revealed in every situation of every day. And I think this is important because we often look look beyond the humdrum, the ordinary um, aspects of everyday life, and we try and think that God's will is um, something crazy out in the future, distant, um, or something so so magnificent or, or regal or nobler. But but in fact, it, our every moment is where God is, and we can experience Him there. And then I, I also wanted to share with you a quote from uh, the time that uh, his parish mission closed in Poland, um, and he was. Uh, didn't know what to do. A lot of people were coming to him with questions, his parishioners, I mean, various people. And, and this is the quote that he gave in the book. He said, Somehow then, God must contrive to break through those routines of ours and remind us once again, like Israel, that we are ultimately dependent only upon him, that he has made us and destined us for life with him and through all eternity, that the things of this world itself are not our lasting city, that his we are, and that we must look to him and turn to him in everything. Then it is perhaps that he must allow our whole world to be turned upside down in order to remind us it is not our permanent abode or final destiny to bring us to our senses and restore our sense of values, to turn our thoughts once more to him, even if at first our thoughts are questioning and full of reproaches. So I think that this is, this is all too, um, all too relevant for right now. Um, I think that I, I had recently reread this quote, um, and it just hit me um, just how powerful this is for this coronavirus time period. That although things may be closed, um, jobs may be um, we might be losing our jobs. Different things might be happening. Um, the economy, whatever it may be, um, God, we are ultimately meant for Him, uh, meant for eternity with Him, and um, He. He's looking for our best in everything, and that might even be turning turning our whole world upside down. And then he goes on to say, Mysteriously, God in his providence must make use of our tragedies to remind our fallen human nature of his presence and his love, of the constancy of his concern and care for us. So just to, to know that through all of this, uh, God God loves us, God cares for us. Um, and yeah, we can we can look to, to the saints to... Um, Walter C's check to other saints and just find a lot of hope um, amidst this suffering. And I think that the church has an amazing, uh, amazing testimony of, of all the saints, a very a great tradition. Um, and they're, they're waiting, waiting to grow in relationship with us, um, to intercede for us. And um, all you have to do is just, yeah, just pick pick one um, or they oftentimes just uh, pick you but just look look for those opportunities and then I just wanted to close um, with a little bit of more of his teaching uh, kind of a summation of all of it and he says where you are now is where God wants you to be stay in the present moment trust God in every circumstance let yourself be carried by him and rest in his love awesome wow Aaron, Aaron's just a great leader in in the life of the Newman Center, and we're very thankful for him, especially for those those great words. Um, one last thing that I want to leave you with as we as we continue on to our last couple of weeks of schooling is that you can tune in next week uh, for Bison Catholic Night at seven thirty during our Dead Week, and I think that'll be our last um, video. So it'll it'll be kind of sad. This will be my last time emceeing Bison Catholic Night, but I just want to say a huge thank you to each and every one of you. Um, for for tuning in and and being committed to the Newman Center as we're doing this distance and digital uh, ministry. The other thing I wanted to leave you with is that we just kind of found out some news that the Diocese of Fargo is is moving their ordination date. Their ordination date was June 6th, and now it's in August sometime. So uh, this pandemic is definitely being heard by our, our great and gracious bishop. 
Um, but that really makes some ramifications to some other individuals at the Newman Center, like myself, um, that are getting married before June 6th, okay? So, you know, we've been holding on for some hope uh, to actually have the wedding as the same as it is. And I know there's other couples at the Newman Center, Aaron to be included, that'll also be getting married before then. So just keep them in your prayers. And this is a hard time for discernment for our priests, as well as, as Bishop Folda and, and some of the young people pursuing their vocation. So um, keep them in your prayers. Know that everything will be okay one day. All right, all right. But uh, until then, have a great one and hope to see you guys around. See you next week.